Full Array versus Mini LED. Sony versus Hisense. Sony X90L versus the Hisense U7K. Up next. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me as we compare the Sony X90L full array local dimming LED to the Hisense U7K mini LED. I love doing this matchup and it is interesting in so many ways. The X90L is the intro to the mid high end for Sony. That's where it's placed in this lineup behind the X93L and the X95L. X95L being the flagship with only one size in the US, the X93 having a 65, 75, and 85. The X90L has a 55, 65, 75, and 85. So that will be the choice for most people looking at Sony LEDs this year. Again, it is full array. The top tier of Sony is all mini LED. Hisense this year is all mini LED, which I was shocked when I saw at CES. Couldn't wait to get my hands on them. I also have the UAK here for review, which you'll also see the Sony X90L go against. But I love this comparison for many reasons. Now, in the comments of the trailer I did accompanying this video, many were concerned about the X90 being too high in the lineup versus the U7K. In reality, they do line up. The U7K is the mid-tier under the U8K, the U8K being the flagship. I don't count the UX as that's a TV all of us want but can't get. Hopefully we'll get our hands on it very soon. But they do match up where they are in the lineup. They don't match up in price, however. The UAK matches up more in price with the X90L. You let me know if they should be matching up. But Sony's processing clarity is definitely on display this year. Now more than ever, they have definitely set themselves apart from every other manufacturer, especially with the X90L being full array versus the U7K mini LED. The X90L has very few dimming zones in comparison to any other LED out there this year. It's amazing to see how it hangs in there versus a mini LED with many more zones. However, I'd also like to point out, high Licenses uh, processing and local dimming is extremely impressive, not only just where it is in the lineup and at this price point. Now, before we jump into the actual comparison, I want to state that we are looking at more vibrant settings here. I want to be able to show you the flexibility of both manufacturers. Both TVs can be extremely accurate with Sony's custom presets and cinema presets, as well as Hisense's filmmaker mode and theater mode. However, I want to show you again, flexibility of image, how each of them can look any way you want them to look. I'm not someone that is stuck on accuracy 100% of the time. I like to be able to show you what they can really do in your own home. I have the X90L, the U7K and the UAK for the duration. So if you want to see other comparisons, let me know what you want to see below in the comments and I'll get them done. That said, let's get to the comparison and thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, I figured I'd throw my intro in the corner as we look at the Sony X90L versus the Hisense U7K. Quickly, I want to go over the prices right now. I'm not going to put them up as prices do change rather rapidly. The X90 at 55 inches is $1,199. The U7K is $600. At 65 inches, the X90 is $1,299. The U7K, $729. At 75 inches, the X90 is almost 2000, where the U7K is 999, and at 85, the X90 is 2799. For context, the UAK is 749 at 55 inches, 1049 at 65 inches, and 1499 at 75 inches. Massive difference in price. 
not massive difference in terms of quality. I think you can be the judge as you look at these two TVs side by side. They are both 65 inches. The top um, X90 is slightly behind as I did not have space to have them side by side as they're both rather large, but you get an idea of how they both look. That's why the top one looks a bit smaller. But you tell me throughout the video if you think the Sony X90 is worth the price difference. Difference. In that regard, think build quality, think processing, fine detail, shadow detail. Though again, the Hisense U7K is doing an amazing job here. Actually, I prefer it in some shots that you're seeing throughout the video. As you check out our good friend Jennifer Gala's content, which you can see throughout the video. Special thank you to Jennifer Gala and her second channel, HDR Super Channel, for all her amazing content. Check the description below for her channel and please like and subscribe to it. What do you see in these images? As I mentioned in the intro, we are looking at vibrancy here. I will show you how they're set up a couple times throughout the video. It would take forever to show you the presets in each one. We will be jumping through standard, custom, cinema, theater. We'll have one shot of vivid and then we will do some gaming. So you'll see the game mode later in the video. Now, while Hisense is trying to set itself apart from being a value brand or a bargain brand, the reason you can't is simply because the price is so affordable. You have to bring it up. As I'm going to show you how these ship out of the box in standard and how I would match them up. Now, standard preset is something that a lot of enthusiasts scoff at. However, the majority of you are going to watch it in this preset as they both ship in this preset now what you're going to see also is if one ships with dynamic contrast at this level or that level i'm simply going to match them when you're comparing two different manufacturers you can't really just go preset to preset as say something like filmmaker mode is much dim much more dim on the Hisense than say custom on the sony so we try to match them up to make them look as similar as possible that way one does not have an advantage over the other moving into the demo all of you like how much is the star field present how does it look Now, that part of the demo has a paler look at the top. That's not blooming. That's just the way it's shot. But I do love this demo from LG. A lot of the demos you'll see in the video will say LG QNED in the top right corner. This is just LG demo material. The QNED lineup had the very best demos um, from LG. They're matched up color-wise, they're matched up processing-wise in terms of leaving some of the bells and whistles. Now, why do I do that? Well, simply on camera, filmmaker mode and even custom can look rather bland. I want to be able to show you every facet of what these TVs can do. Special thank you to Value Electronics for providing the Sony X90L for extended review. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below for all their information. Let them know that Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy sent you. The Hisense was provided by Hisense, though this is not a sponsored or paid review. I was not told to say anything positive or negative, just to share my thoughts. I also have the UAK in for review, which you will see up next. Now viewing this comparison, what do you guys see? As we mentioned a few times already, the X90L has very few zones and Sony has always discussed that the zone count wasn't important. It's really about the algorithm and I couldn't agree more. However, it's always in the back of your mind when you're paying more money, sometimes for less. However, the blacks are excellent. The local dimming is exquisite in terms of how it operates. It handles in some of these shots better than the higher zone count of the Hisense. However, in many of the shots, the Hisense does have better blacks and a better blooming control. What I would say is that the clarity and the 3D uh, depth of image a lot of times will fall to the Sony. 
more detail in the sand. Um, its contrast ratio, though I don't believe is higher, um, kind of lives within the details of a lot of the materials you see. However, the brightness of the X90 at times isn't used to help it. Sometimes it's to its detriment. It'll create a overall paler image throughout the entire scene. They both have excellent HDR impact. Now, while you're seeing demo material, they both do very well with all types of movies. With the different presets, such as a filmmaker, theater mode is probably my favorite. Uh, mode for Hisense and then standard, I shouldn't say standard, SDR, you actually end up with a theater day and night. Has a nice accuracy, though you still have a lot of pop, a lot of vibrancy. Older films, you would want to switch to a more accurate because of the grain structure. But in terms of vibrancy and pop, they both did amazing. Some of this is shot in a brighter room with windows behind me. A lot of it's going to be in a dark room. Now, I've always been a fan of the X90 series since the X90J and the X90K. The build quality was always a bit subpar. It has improved this year. U7K's build quality is also very good. I actually like the design of it. UAK's design is slightly more refined. Again, you'll see the UAK go against the U7K and the X90L. Sorry if I messed up my letters in there. But the colors are very similar. They go back and forth so often. I want to leave it to you to let me know what you see in the comments. Now, quickly for where the sony is in its lineup again it's the intro to its higher end tier with the x93 above it x93 having three sizes the x95 having only one the x95 and the x93 are both amazing the x90 is a step down the X93 and X95 have the backlight master drive. They are mini LED, especially the X95 superior local dimming. You can see in that shot right there where there was a bit more blooming on the X90. And it wouldn't really be always around dark or yeah, dark and bright images. It would be within the image. However, in this shot coming up, as far as the jewelry, there is definitely more shine and more detail within each diamond on the Sony. But if you look within the image, there are times where that zone count does defy it. A lot of times when you look for blooming, we all look on in black bars. We look around the delineation of bright images. A lot of times also look within the center of the image. If you're familiar with projectors having a hot spot, that's a lot of times where you'll see uh, blooming within the image. Just it'll look paler somewhere in the middle of the screen or to the sides. But what Sony's able to do with their processing this year with the XR Clear, which is only on the X90 and the X95 as far as their LED lineup and also on the QD OLED and the A80L. Its upscaling is the best in the business. It's always been that way. This year they take another step up, but you also see the clarity in all types of content. The U7K also does a good job of upscaling in itself. You'll see that in a separate comparison between the two. But to get the upscaling from the U7K and even the UAK at this price point is ridiculous. And the image quality for the U7K, regardless of price point, is ridiculous. But when you add in the, the fact that it's literally half the price of the TV it's competing with right now, and that even its flagship U8K is still two, three, four hundred dollars cheaper in some cases. Really can't go wrong. And I joked in my U7K video that I was often criticized for only reviewing the highest end. So to be able to review Hisense this year is awesome. Able to be able to bring you firsthand um, knowledge and material of it. In that shot there, you can see they both look very bright. There is a bit more haloing around the X90. 
And what's interesting too with the algorithm um, as we get into um, how quickly it transitions, that makes the biggest difference. Now going through some more presets to show you how different they can look with cinema and theater. But the processing is again where Sony will always pull ahead. And in terms of spending that extra money, I can only um, ask you if that's worth it. To me, a lot of that processing is worth it. As I mentioned before, the zone count um, does bother me. It's always bothered me. <laughs> I, think, I think of it in terms of horsepower. But in reality, Sony does not worry about it. They know what their signature is and what their motto is. I will say as well as the Hisense U7K, I do like this year more than others, being able to really change the image to your liking. That flexibility of image, you'll hear me say that constantly. Accuracy, great. Pop, great. I wanna be able to do it all. And I wanna be able to present that to all of you watching, not just the enthusiasts that cares about the director's intent. I do care about the director's intent to some degree. Now this demo, they both look amazing simply because the transition is rather slow. But again, you can see there are deeper blacks on the U7K. But I'll argue in those scenarios, the X90 still has a clarity and does have more three dimensionality. A lot of you guys ask about that 3D image. There is a clearer image on it. I don't know if it's the coating of the screen. They both are semi-gloss. Moving into, again, our girl Jennifer Gala's content. I love this video for its black bars. Now we're dead center. They're both chest level in a way where the camera is. So both black bars look fantastic. That's all I'm really concerned about. Now the aspect ratio here is very wide, so you can actually see the black bars. I'll go off angle where you can see where both of them will fall apart if you go too high, too low, and too over to the side. If that's important to you, you'll have to go with a much higher end LED or move to OLED. Now quickly with OLEDs, if you are an OLED fan um, and you love OLED's image, it's very hard to think any LED of any quality is going to pull you away unless you need that 85 inch size. Speaking of that, the X90 at 85 I think will be an excellent purchase for anyone. There also is a 100 inch that I don't put with the regular, uh, the regular part of its lineup. Same with the UX from Hisense. But if you're looking for a very large 85 inch TV, I would imagine the algorithm, the peak brightness of the X90 will be highly recommended. I believe the U7K and UAK max out at 75. But again, the price points are just very difficult when you start saying to yourself that I can buy perhaps two of them and spread them around the house. Picking up off the camera, going up, or a tripod, going off angle. You can see how they both fall apart. However, the X90 actually hangs in there a bit better off angle, where you see the U7K off angle, they would get almost white or very pale. Now I'm extremely off angle. There you go. But what's most important is you're not seeing the camera exposure change. Just moving back, dropping down, and there you go, they're back. So off, the, off angle viewing, not super important to me unless you're watching uh, in a very large room and you have seating area far to your right or left. I also don't ever recommend um, if you're gonna mount a TV, mount it up high. You have to tilt it down because you will see uh, local dimming struggle if you are below the TV. Now in terms of Hisense or a company like Hisense, are you ready to give that brand a shot or is that stigma still there as a value brand? Speaking to them at CES, talking about having their TVs available at a Best Buy or someplace where you can really see them, not the bargain or the lower end that you would see perhaps in Costco or a, a warehouse type Walmart, 
but in a Best Buy competing with Samsung, LG, and Sony. Because I'm telling you, if you could see the U7 or even last year's UH um, 8H on display, you would be shocked if it was next to the higher end panels at such a low price. So it really is a disservice to them to not have their TVs in stores that way. Which is why I wanted them for review because honestly, up until this year, I could not recommend them as I did not have true firsthand experience. Not even through my Best Buy walkthroughs, which I still do from time to time. So they are serious about jumping into that upper tier. I do feel Hisense and TCL are definitely jumping in to usurp either LG, Sony, or Samsung. That will be a topic for another video on which of the big three do you think is vulnerable? But judging by the picture quality, not the price, you would think this is a higher end TV, which it is in their lineup, but that price makes you double think it and say, oh, well, it's very affordable. And as I mentioned, it doesn't look cheap. The U7K has a harder plastic on the back. The U7K is very loud, has a subwoofer in the back. You can hear it. The X90 has very good sound quality too. It's loud. As we move into our vivid preset, I do this for everyone to see how bright they can really get. This is a very tough demo. What I like about it though, it's very bright and you can see the transition to the black scenes where it actually hangs in there. Both transitions are very quick. You'll see that in a second and neither one of them will fall apart. We'll move into gaming next. But I'd love to show this vivid dynamic mode to some people do watch TV in this mode. You have no judgment from me, your TV, you enjoy it any way you like. This transition here is not easy for any LED and they both handle it very well. Now let's move into some gaming on the PS5. Now I will show you both game bars. Sony does have a game bar this year, which I appreciate. You can see the Hisense's game bar is definitely more detailed and more elaborate. Sony's game bar, while I'm happy it's here, it is anemic at best. I'm glad it's here. VRR 120. Um, auto low latency mode is here. Hisense has many more features, including 144 hertz. Hisense also has the ability to choose several different presets within the game mode. And they also have some presets that take you out of game mode. Sony has, to me, a slightly better looking game mode, clearer. And I hope you like it because it really can't be changed much. Its uh, flexibility of image is kind of left out. It can't be changed a whole lot. And even Hisense, both dynamic contrast or active contrast on both the Sony and the Hisense is disabled. I imagine they keep input lag very low. Both very responsive, again, more elaborate game bar on the Hisense, bravo for that. They also have a FPS counter. But a game mode is pretty much expected from all manufacturers now. My f most important part of gaming really isn't just the FPS counter. The presets is important to me. Again, flexibility of image. But I want these game modes to look as good as possible. They both have local dimming, which does function and does work very well. It does have an impact, does change the image quite a bit. The 144 hertz portion of Hisense I am struggling to get to work on a PC. I think it's just an NVIDIA card thing, but you will see another comparison on gaming. The U8K does have a better looking game mode than the U7K, but I'll bring you the 144 hertz game mode on the Hisense soon, as well as the U8K and other comparisons from the Sony X90L. But having 144 hertz is definitely a plus for those of you on PC. 
What do you think of the different game modes? Both TVs are very bright, very colorful, very vibrant. Now towards the end of this video, they are both highly recommended. You tell me who you think won, and then you factor in the price. There are many shots where the Hisense to me looked better. For me, the Sony was always a bit cleaner, had a bit more clarity, but there were times where the local dimming on the Hisense outperformed due to the many more zones, which is very impressive. Again, I keep saying it at this price point. The Sony X90L released very late in the year, so look for that price to drop. If it released when it typically does, they'd be much closer in price. All right, guys, I am Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Love you guys. Take care.